Today on Broadcast, we are here with the fabulous Susie Meister of Brain Candy. So you're going to want to stick around. Broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. This is Broadcast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Welcome to Broadcast. We're here. We're here. Hi. And we're not going anywhere or whatever that phrase is. We might. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, first of all, we're doing, we're, we're attempting Facebook Live again. Um, we have moved the camera a little bit further away from us. We are here with the fabulous Susie Meister of Brain Candy Podcast and First, some people may recognize you from Road Rules. Yep. Oh my and gosh. The challenges. And the ch- oh my gosh. So me. I said that to Emma this morning, <laughs> our, our assistant. I said, um, oh yeah, she was on Road Rules and, you know, with her, her co host, that's where they met. And she's like, what's Road Rules? I'm like, oh. yes. I know. Just because she's. She young. didn't say what's MTV. She- <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I said, before, Wait, I mean. Is MTV still on the air? You're like a, yeah. <laughs> you're like a trailblazer, though, when it comes to reality because. That that was like there wasn't a lot of reality back then. No, it was just us and cops. That's basically <laughs> it. There was no survivor. Nineteen seventy eight, right? We're in nineteen ninety eight, which is basically the same. It Clinton was same. in office, and wow. everything was different. How did that? How did like? Let's go back to the you know throwback Monday. Um, how, go back to where it all started. You well, were doing what in your life when all that happened? I just finished high school. I was eighteen, and I was a super fan of the show. And I was just like, I should go on there. I didn't know any better and thought, I'll just apply and then I'll go on and that's that. And that's how it worked out. And I'm so blessed in a way because it paid for school and was such a great experience. But I mean, those shows just sort of took off and then it went bananas. Now everything's reality. Right. So Was Road Rules the first one or wasn't there? It was, was Real th- World. Oh, Real World. Yes. And then Road Rules. What was, the, what was the different? What was Road Rules? So Road Rules was a spinoff of the Real World where it was essentially just throw them on a Winnebago yep. and make them yep. ride right. I around. Loved it. Right. I preferred it. Isn't that where it, uh, like Dan it. Cortez came from or something? No, <laughs> he should have. He was like a um, <laughs> VJ, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, but no, we just rode around and did, they called them missions at the time. So you had to do a mission to get paid. And then, you know, you're supposed to have some sort of coming of age moment on national television. <laughs> like a legit coming of age or a manufactured coming of age moment? <laughs> well, I think they wanted to be legit, but they're willing to manufacture it. But right, I was yeah. 18 and I was a Christian and I was a virgin and I, they, I was sort of that person. They mm. really liked that type of a person at that time yeah did they and put a little halo over you and i mean like essentially wings? they yeah. showed me reading we were that the bible <laughs> and there was like choir music playing so <laughs> that was my character in, and um so then they showed like a dizzying descent where like i stole a pull, pair of bowling shoes and said the f word one time it was scandalous <gasps> what people. oh yeah. my gosh and now and that's TV's like so different now they would never even cast me now you know why because they only cast one kind of person now as like a partier and like uncensored mm. and crazy. Snooky. Yeah, snooky. <laughs> so I read in one of your, um, on one of, yeah, susiemeister.com, right? Yeah. Okay. So I read in one of your articles that you wrote for something, I can't remember, um, that you wrote about like what happens behind the scenes and like how much of it really is manufactured yeah. and um, like some of the, the sexism and I think there was some sexual harassment things like. Yeah. Without, I don't really know the legalities of some of that stuff, but will you talk a little bit about like what, what went on behind the scenes that people don't know um, when they're watching and they think that they're watching this great show, but like yeah. what's actually happening and what we end up seeing on TV? Yeah. My relationship with reality TV is kind of complicated because in many ways it's given me everything that's good in my life. I was able to get an education and my husband was a sound guy on the show, so that's how I met him. And I feel like really lucky because of that, but... I can't pretend like all the kind of yucky stuff doesn't exist, which Mm. is that it's very much like a fraternity um, mindset when you're, especially on the challenges, which still are on the air now. And it's a boys will be boys mentality. And you kind of, it it becomes normalized when you're there. And then only looking back was I like, wait, why did I tolerate that? I would never do that in my real life, put up with some of that behavior. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of like, well, this is a challenge. You knew what you were getting into and... So I feel a little bit like it's like an abusive relationship where every time I said, I'll never go back. And then they're like, you're pretty. You should come on. I'm like, okay. (laughs) And then I would go back. I went back seven times. And so that's a bit of a messed up mindset. So I still am a consumer of reality TV. I love The Bachelor. But it's important, I think, for viewers to know that what they're watching is very produced 
and that the people don't really know what they're getting into because it's very different when you're there. Right. So do they set it? They do they tell you what it's going to be, and then you get sort of bamboozled when you get there. Or I mean, because if Road Wheels was the first one, you really didn't know. Yeah. Like now, I like I think about people that go on to Bachelor, you know, or Bachelor because I watch that too, <laughs> and they're like, I can't believe that they're dating five other women. I'm like, if you watch it, it's been on for 20 years. Do like, you know do the you not know of the show? Right. But if you like Road Rules. <laughs> If that was if that was the first one, yeah, you really didn't know too much. So no, how did you get? I mean, did you know what you were getting into, or kind of not really? Or I definitely didn't know what I was getting into at all. And additionally, it's changed, so it gets a little more extreme each time. So at first, you know, we had access to phones and internet and things like that, and then slowly over time, they took away more and more stuff because they felt like they had to. Um, encourage and incentivize bad behavior Mm. so to do that you get rid of all the distractions so there's nothing to do except the drink the alcohol that they provide you constantly and so if you have nothing to do but drink you're gonna create an environment that's very different than real life how did they get away with you giving alcohol to underage people well, back then it was different. So, you know, I didn't drink. I was in Australia where you can drink at 18, oh. but I, I That's wasn't why they a go to other then. places. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. But now they don't cast anyone under 18. Oh. Yeah, uh, under, under 21. 21. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Which it's different sense. now. They've But they've learned. They just change all the 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 environment and the situation to facilitate their end goal which is entertaining television so i i don't want to harp on the negative part but like i always well i always read a lot of the uh, articles about like the bullying and the and the and yeah. the abuse that goes on and even like some of the um the weightlift the weightlifting the weight loss shows um where oh, yeah. there's harassment like there's there's so many negative things that get attached but nobody doesn't really seem to get that much play like i feel mm. like oh that bad happened and then people move there are on certain things I- in hollywood that are protected mm. and i think that the, the the treatment of people sometimes on reality shows is one of them is that kind of what you're yeah i just i, I hear these things but i never hear these things like, right they're kind of like floated rumors but you have to i mean when people come off the show and well you, you probably sign an nda yeah, there's a there's a period of time where you can't really talk about it, but right. I'm but if you that. but you've talked you've talked about it. Other people yeah. that have left shows have talked about it, but people are like, oh well, you're just mad that you didn't win, or you're just mad that you got dumped, or you're just mad because you got kicked off. I'm thinking, right. how do you blow off the fact that someone is talking about this abhorrent behavior that is going on? And I'm just curious as to why. It seems to me that because people do watch these shows and are so entertained by them, there's a part of them that feels like people that get to go on them are lucky and really shouldn't complain because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that think, I'd love to go live in a house with a bunch of good-looking people or whatever and and do nothing but drink for a month. That sounds great. Right. So then to... To paint it in a way that's like ungrateful, that's how they see it. It's that you should be thankful. Mm. Look, you know, you got you got to get out of Pittsburgh and you got all travel. So there are good things. And I think people prefer to not admit that the shows that they love are kind of abusive in a way. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so, but I mean, a lot of good things came of the show too. Yeah. I mean, you met your husband and you mm-hmm. met your co-host of Brain Candy. Yes. Yeah, Sarah. Sarah's great. And she's... um continued to be on MTV as well. Yeah, she's still in the thick of her abusive relationship with reality <laughs> TV. She's currently on the show that's airing called Rivals 3, which is the challenge. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so she, I told her not to go, but you know, she felt like she Just had to learn it for herself. Her. Yeah. One last rival in her. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm kind of But you know, to... money is, money is a very strong pull and when it comes to. Too. Yeah. I think if you have that in you where you like want to compete and and try to win. Right. There's something. Peeps we know people. nothing about that. <laughs> I'm such a loser. That I don't know. <laughs> really? See, I, I would. I don't have that. I have it from my kid. Like yeah. I find my son plays basketball. Um, I didn't realize how competitive I was until I go to his games. I'm the one screaming at the ref, and I'm the one going, <laughs> "Come on!" And then like no. if, a kid, if a kid pushes my son, I'm like, "Hey, 22, watch the hands!" Like I, fi- I kick, I, I, I throw my arms. Like I, nobody can sit next to me because I'm very violent when I watch. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I, get, I do. How crazy. It's the in fact you. that her kid is 12 is really scary. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's weird. Like, I, I am tame compared to other people, I will tell you. But, like, in inner side, like I'm, I'm really, I'm exaggerating a little bit. But, like, uh-huh. it, I find that, like, I get 
yeah. worked up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had to stop playing Candy Crush for that reason. <laughs> you are kidding me. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I had to delete it from my phone because mm. I am so like, I want to win stuff. And when I don't, and then it's like fail. It literally said the word fail across the screen. I was like, this is not good for it's my, too real. this is not good for my self esteem. Okay, really, when we can move on, my girlfriend plays <laughs> Candy Crush and she satisfies every level, but she has to get three stars. She will not go on to the unless she gets three yeah. stars i'm like oh i am not that yeah if i can crazy. barely get in with the last second i'm moving on but she's like, she keeps going anyway. hey so if you're just segway. joining yeah, us you're listening segway. to broadcast with kim goldman and jackie mcdougall we are here with the fabulous Susie meister um i've been excited for that we already have you on our wall i couldn't believe on it. our our broad squad wall of fame here um, if you're on, if you are listening, you can also join us on Facebook um, and add a question. Ask Susie a question. Ask us a question. Um, we're Facebook living right now. Is that a mm-hmm. verb now? Yeah. Yeah, so, it is. So you, we should be calling you Doctor Susie. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. This is you very rude. PhD. You. I know. Right. <laughs> a PhD. Yeah. yeah. Is it religious studies? Yeah. 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 You know, just like every other reality star. <laughs> Who isn't? <laughs> I mean, I think after reality star, it's like you either shower twenty seven thousand times a day, <laughs> or you go into some like real religion because <laughs> you have to somehow right, purge yourself. yourself yes yeah so was that always part of the plan even i just though- got that that was really funny <laughs> yeah. slow what, on that one th- <laughs> thanks Kim. so were you, was that part of the plan always i mean you said you grew up christian so it's not like a, a huge leap for you but was that part of the plan to go um to college a, a, that far with no. religious studies no and- no i just really was since i was so devout growing up I kind of wanted to hold it up to um, academic scrutiny and see if it held up for me. Wow. And so that it just kept going until I and sorted did it? it out. Um, I think that I'm a reflection of a lot of like the millennials actually where the uh, organizational components of religion don't resonate with me and are kind of a turnoff. Mm-hmm. But the spirituality still is important. And I think a lot of people feel like that, the spiritual but not religious thing. Right, right. Yeah, and I it used to sound way. kind of, I mean, at least in my opinion, 10 years, 20 years ago, kind of like a cop out. Like, yeah. I just don't feel like going to church. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I grew up Catholic and um, there was a time where... Uh, we would go and just get the bulletin, you know, like the paper <laughs> and then sneak back it's out, evident. which yeah. I'm so sorry, dad, yeah. if you're watching over me. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, as a, as an adult, it's it's tough to uh, I'm just not there. And it used to feel like people just kind of were too lazy, but it's it's not like, yeah, what, what is that? I mean, well, it's interesting because they found that statistically people are becoming more secular. And so they are leaving their traditional religions that they grew up with. But interestingly, the rates of um, the behaviors like meditating or praying or uh, involvement with your community are remaining pretty stable. Hmm. So that makes me encouraged. It makes me think maybe that idea isn't so hollow, that they actually are spiritual. Right. And so it's not just an empty platitude for a lot of people, I think. Right. When did you, what point did you start holding it up to that, like questioning it? I mean, I I absolutely know when it changed for me because I was raised Jewish. I mean, I, I... I absolutely know when it happened. Do you remember when you started to go, hmm, I don't know if this is really what I, I, cause I remember I was reading something about, it was partly because you also was were a Republican. And when you were questioning like what the ideals of the Republican party were and how it measured up to what you felt as a Christian. And so yeah. do you remember those moments that that happened for you? Yeah. When I started studying it in um, college and undergraduate, I just, it was like a house of cards where one thing I was like, wait, I'm a feminist and that doesn't seem to always fit well with the the way churches are run mm. and organization of different religions. And so it was just one thing after the next and slowly over time I'm like, I don't think I can call myself that anymore. But it was a little like being too close to the Monet where when you're studying it, it's just too familiar and I'm looking at it so intensely, especially in the PhD program. Now that I have some distance, I feel like I'm a little more comfortable and I have a son and I see the value of religion in people's lives a little more than I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. How did your family react when you started to question if you're raised in a devout environment? Yeah. Did they? My mom's sad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I think that we're finding some common ground over time where, you know, she's a very conservative um, Pentecostal Christian evangelical and a lot of the rhetoric and politics of that no longer fit for me, mm-hmm. but um, we're agreeing to disagree somewhat. <laughs> and so I think that we can find some common ground. I'm, I'm optimistic about that, but it, I think it was very hard. And I can understand as a parent, if you really thought your child 
was making a choice that might send them to hell. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. But you know what's interesting though is that if you're raised in a home where you were you know as devout as you're explaining um, but then you found yourself to be a feminism those are they seem kind of counterintuitive. Yeah. So on one hand, want, your mom wants you to, was probably proud of you for being so strong yeah. and independent and have such strong values. But on the other hand, it's like, wait, <laughs> not too much so that you leave <laughs> these things behind. So that's got to be a hard yeah. balance too. Yeah, there was an incongruity there that I think is, I'm a little bit more of a reflection of the cultural shifts. And she's, you know, a generation above me. And so she's a reflection of that somewhat. And it, it, come, it manifests for people and I think they're religious beliefs and opinions Mm -hmm. what do you think of i mean it feels like this country right now is like religion just the word gets people like the their spines they stand up straight and they're ready to like battle because you know people some people with muslims and and you know grouping or christianity and republicans and conservative and like everybody just seems to be jumping all over each other um in politics right now yes what do you what are your well, I mean, Thoughts there. I do think that, like you said, a lot of what makes people feel uneasy about religion has to do with um, the news and political issues rather than just religion by itself. And I know they overlap, so it's hard to have them be separate. But, I mean, it's troubling for me to watch because a lot of what people read on the internet isn't accurate in terms of their religiosity and, and grouping other people. Mm. Um, but... I just, I really, I like a lot of people I see on Facebook are like, I'm deleting everyone if you're voting for so-and-so. I don't like that because I want to see what the other side says because otherwise it's just an echo chamber where we all just spit at people who agree with us and then we don't hear what uh, the other side is saying. It's a great point. It's a great point. I want to be reminded because I want to know what I'm up against. Right. And, you know, see if we can maybe make some peace and especially racially. I really want to... Um, like race, racial reconciliation is important to me. And I feel like the language right now is quite divisive. Yeah. And yeah. what are your, what, what it's funny. Cause we, we had Jared Hill, um, who broke the whole, uh, plagiarism oh scandal. He's our, one of our regular contributors and he was on not too long ago and we were talking about race and things like that. And I, and, and I was saying to him that just like, I'm an ally for, you know, gay and lesbian, yes. LB, I'm like LG, LGB, all the letters. TQ. It actually keeps <laughs> going, but we'll show it. <laughs> Although I noticed at the Republican convention, whenever somebody mentioned that, the other people were trying to spell it out. Like, what does that spell? Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that I'm an ally. So if there, if there's something about equal rights, you know, I, I try to use my voice um, yeah. to speak up. Right. Yeah. So same thing with racial issues. I think that as as white people, yes. you know, that it is, you know, our job to stand up because you can't necessarily stand up for yourself in that position because everyone thinks it's all self-serving. Mm-hmm. So I think it's our job. Yeah. Um, so what are your what are your thoughts? I feel like I'm in a unique position because they always say that the most segregated time in uh, American life is Sunday morning. So churches, there's black churches and there's white churches and people aren't coming together. If you don't worship together, then you're probably not going to want to see each other in any other time of the week. So I think that would be a great place to start is for people to look out for multicultural um churches and congregations and Mm -hmm. and that would be a good start also believe it or not the real world has been good in one sense which is exposing a lot of people to different kinds of um lifestyles races classes um you know pedro was the first person with aids on television yes, or HIV positive. yes. Uh-huh. the real world it's being important. the actual show on mtv yeah. not yeah. in quotes for the for uh-huh. those of you yeah. who aren't yeah. our age <laughs> so i feel like that exposed me and made yes. me it changed the path of my life so maybe if i could work in those t- two realms but do you think that because you were possibly open to it that's why it was able to change your path because i i sometimes think that you know to to put a Pedro, for example, um, on the real world, people are like, oh, see, <laughs> gay AIDS, that's just how it works. Oh, and like, I think, I wonder, I wonder when they highlight, you know, even, even on, like when you watch The Bachelor, The Bachelor, yeah. you, and I'm saying this with air quotes and please don't yell at me, like the token, right? There's always going to be the token one with the kid. There's the token black guy. There's the token Asian guy. And then it's always taking bets to see how long they actually last on the show. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of sad, yeah. you know? But I think that, that we're almost so 
so jaded by all of it that we almost expect that there's going to be one of every yeah just so that we don't get in trouble for not but i don't know that we're at a place that it, it becomes second age like you just yeah it's total produced you, you know I, and that's what i'm saying so like i i I appreciate what you're saying, but I also feel like it's totally, it doesn't even feel authentic. I feel like they went down the list. They had the the pretty blonde girl, the Christian, the virgin, like, okay, check. Yeah. And they had the, (laughs) and I think that that, that, that happens on all of these shows. And sometimes even, you know, even with like the, the, the RNC, I know we're going to see it this week. You're going to have everybody that fits each category to make sure that. Yeah. Oh, DNC. RNC last week and the DNC this week. That they're going to fit. They're going to make sure that it's all there. Everyone's represented. And it maybe doesn't feel as authentic as... Everybody's cast. It's always about casting. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I think if you're open to it, you don't pay attention to it. If you're closed off to it, you're judging it. Like, I just... Mm. I'm disappointed in us. Yeah. You know what? I honestly... We've talked about that a lot. Like, I feel like we're not as tolerant as we should be in 2016. Um, But maybe it's always been this way and just reality TV and internet. Even just the word tolerant. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like Mm -hmm. we should be tolerant of others. Like... Yeah. Like... I know, but it's like, oh, it's it sounds just so exhausting that we should just put up with. Like, it's another word for put up with them. Yeah. As opposed to like, hey, how about we recognize, acknowledge, and maybe even celebrate? You know, like, why? I, I find the, the people often um, say, use the word love. Like, you know, I love everybody. Or I, I love the mm. sinner, hate the sin is something I hear a lot in my work. And so I feel like I want to challenge that. And so maybe exposing yourself to a different group of people. It's uncomfortable to be with people who don't look like you. It it just is. You notice your difference. And so I think that's not a bad thing to feel that every once in a while, to be uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and to be like, I don't know the right thing to say right now. Right. That's okay. Yes. And be authentic about it. Yeah. I I wish there was a little more of that because I'm not a big PC person. I don't like that. whole We have to say the right thing all the time. If you're intentional and careful and loving, it's okay if you say the wrong thing. But do you find that because you have a public image that you're under a certain, you have a certain expectation that you need to be more PC or less PC or more because you're a religious study that you should be like, are there expectations that have been placed on you that aren't reasonable? Um, If there are, I don't feel that. If I don't feel any sort of pressure, I do feel all of a sudden within the last year, maybe it's because of what's going on in the news, this sense of like, wait, I have an audience, so why don't I tell them ways that they can be constructive or point mm. a, shine a light on things that I think are really sad and horrible in our world? It might do nothing, but it's better than doing nothing at all right. and not trying. So I am attempting that, especially with the, the church issue. There's an organization called Table Setters where they encourage just regular people to invite people of color and different, and different ethnicities into your house, break bread, and just talk. And right. hang out, and then maybe you'll learn something. That's such a small thing, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's what I, that's what, I mean, we talk about this, but I'm in a place in my life where I just want to learn. Right? Like, like I, I went, you know, went through school and all that, <laughs> and then, you know, got married, had kids, all that. Now I'm getting kind of finding myself again, you know, after kids, and, and, and learning is awesome. <laughs> no, Isn't it's it great? Like, I don't want to go to school or anything. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. But just listening to other points of view. Listening, right? Listening. That's it. It's yeah. the key word, I think. And what, I mean, so given that, and you mentioned the RNC, like, what do you think of last week at the RNC and, and how that all went down? And it should be, you, you switched parties, right? So yeah. you're Republican and then now you're Democrat. Yeah. Right? Right. I wrote a, an article called Why I Left the Right because <laughs> I was I was um, on the campaign for George W. Bush. Really? I went mm-hmm. to the inaugural ball. I was in deep. Wow. <laughs> You went to the ball. I went to the ball. Went I had the a ball, gown. The you went yeah. to the ball, Cinderella. Oh, my yes. God. Oh, sorry. My dad's calling. He didn't oh. Sorry. Sorry, Pops. <laughs> sorry, Talk to you later, was, Fred. Sorry. I thought that was turned off. <laughs> yes. And I was in it. And I was really committed. And then uh, over time, I um, switched in the same way that my religion kind of shifted. That shifted as well. Wow. Um, and so if anyone that follows me on Twitter, they will see that I'm very snarky and silly about politics. Mm-hmm. And I make a lot of jokes. So the RNC w- was ripe for that but my mom's voting for trump so i i hear a lot of you know why pe- why people feel that he is a good voice for them and i think it's interesting wow but it's troubling to me yes <laughs> my husband woke up this morning um and he he was getting ready for work and i was still in bed and he's like i'm really worried and i'm like oh my gosh yeah. what happened overnight oh. no like i i'm like yeah. what what, what? No i mean context. we have fires we're in santa clarita <laughs> you know outside of la like if if 
you haven't been living under a rock. There are fires here. Yeah, yes. that's why my dad's calling to check on me. So lots I'm sorry. and lots I'm just, of. I'm that's saying okay. I'm where I'm okay. <laughs> lots and lots of fires, yeah. right? So um, thank you for coming here. Um, but uh, you know. Totally lost my train of thought sure, about Trump. You're, <laughs> Jeff woke up thinking, oh, yeah. yeah. So he, <laughs> your father threw me off. Um, <laughs> no, but he was like, "I'm worried." So I'm like, "What are you worried about?" And he's like, "I, I, I think Trump might win. Win. Yeah." And he was, you got to know my husband. He's so easygoing. He's just kind of you know like goes with the flow. And the the energy he had and the fear and the concern in his voice, I was it. I, I still have a little anxiety over it. Yeah. And he's right. Do yeah. you think? I just started to feel that way. She he got some points after that uh, convention. He mm. went up and I was like, oh my, he's closing in on her. And this That's is real. Crazy. This is really going to happen. So we'll see how things play out. You know, interesting though, since you were, you've been so entrenched in politics, I, I keep hearing from so many people, you know, that it's like the lesser of two evils. And yeah. it's kind of unfortunate to me that people are voting for one just because they hate the other one mm. so much. Yeah. That, you know, to, to not have a clear choice you know, yeah. it feels like, um, you know, now, and I, I, I don't know too much about it, but like over the weekend, the WikiLeaks with the, um, the, the Democratic DNC. Party, yes. yeah, with the, you know, their attacks on Bernie and, yeah. you know, I mean, I just, I feel like, well, how did we get here? Like, yeah, we're such a smart, I thought it's such a smart country that like, how did, how did we get to this place? You know? And I, and it, it does worry me and I have friends that are Republicans and they're worried and, you know, and I said, but you had 25 candidates. Like, how did you, <laughs> you had 25 people. How did you let that happen? You know, yeah. what happened that that happened? You know, and I mean, I think at least with the Democrat, and I don't know what happened with Bernie, but I don't know that Bernie would ever have had a chance against Trump. But I sort of feel like the Democratic Party, which maybe, which is what the Republican Party should have done is gotten behind one candidate right. a little bit more. Maybe not as, as irresponsibly or as deceitfully as it seems like they may have done mm. with Bernie and Hillary. But it sounds like they got behind a candidate they thought was actually a strong leader who could beat Trump. And maybe they sabotaged. I'm not saying that's right. But I feel like the Republican Party like didn't get behind anybody. And that yeah. doesn't say a lot when you've got 25 candidates, you know, that... Their own party yeah. couldn't get behind one of them. Do you think? What do you think the percentage of Republicans? I mean, this is kind of a but like shot in the dark. But like, what do you think the percentage of Republicans um, are really supportive of Trump? It sounds like a lot, to really? be honest with you. And I think whenever you're in this world that you guys live in and where where I live, you can forget and think nobody's voting for him. I don't know. I don't, you know, besides my right. mom, who's voting for Trump? But there's a lot of people in this world who's you know his rhetoric really resonates with them and sounds and right. And he hasn't said anything. Yeah. That's the problem. Fear is so powerful, <laughs> isn't it? It, like, it? Totally. And, you know, when my mom talks about it, that's what she talks about is ISIS, a lot of about ISIS and this fear of like, and, you know, the idea of, did you see the, was it the Daily Show or whatever, where they were like, well, when was America great? Yeah. And then making people yeah. pick. And yeah. it is a good question because really it was really good for white men most of the time right right and then we added a few people in later <laughs> right right that's so, so true when do they mean is that's what unfair. we were saying too was like when, what's the timeline like i need a timeline so i can follow <laughs> along when was it great when was it not great when you know but he he doesn't say anything he just you're right he, he preys on the fear yeah um and and he talks about how he's going to defeat isis and like really, really fast. Oh He's going to, you know, really, fa <laughs> really fast, okay. you know, everything's going to happen. Like he's going to be sworn in on January 20th. And then by January 21st, it's every gonna America's going to be great again. Be great Have again. you yeah. heard the people that say that when you are privileged, that equality can feel like oppression? I think that's what's happening. Oh, interesting. Is that when you've had all these great rights and you've just done whatever you wanted for so long, the idea of equality feels like you're losing something. Mm. And that's scary to people. And I think that Christians feel like that. I think that a lot of white people feel like that. A lot of straight people feel like that. And so they feel that Trump will protect their privilege. They wouldn't say that, but that's what I think. Well, I've said that for a long time, mm. that I think that he speaks loudly about things that people secretly feel. Yeah. And so he revealed this underbelly Mm -hmm. you know and in a very public way um and it, that's the part that scares that me more scary. than him actually right. that right. there are people in this country that subscribe to that hate monger and i was watching something and he makes it okay for them to hate he's like giving permission for all these people yeah. who were quiet about their hate and now they're able to be um before you go there though we're going to stop our facebook live okay. um head over to broadcast.com if you want to hear us live or 
on one of our uh, stations around the country. Um, Emma, that means you stop Facebook Live, please. <laughs> 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 Thank you to our assistant, Emma. So um, anyway, so now we can be free. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but you were, I'm sorry. No, just, I, I, that's the part that scares me, that there, there is this resurgence, it sort of feels like, of this hate that I, I'm so against and so like it feels toxic like every time I turn on the tv it just feels so toxic and dirty and and I I don't I'm just bleh. like I don't even I'm not even excited to listen to the DNC because I feel like you know it's yeah. just going to be oh I hate the Republicans the Republicans are bad and this is I just I want I want strength based I'm so I mean I come from a mental health background I want strength based conversation mm. I want I'm so sick of being told what everybody doesn't do right I want to yeah. know what's going to be done good like I and I hope that we we talk about this in the last couple of weeks. I hope that when Hillary's team gets up, that they're going to talk about the positives and not be so um, bombastic and like just so hateful. I just mm-hmm. I felt like every time I turned on the the RNC, I was just was sad. Like yeah, and I couldn't hear something that may have been smart because it just was so rooted in something negative that mm. I just I I couldn't I I had a stink face. But, I mean, Ivanka's uh, speech and also uh, Donald Trump Jr.'s speech, I, I thought both of them were good. And I thought, I mean, the man they're describing doesn't resemble at all the man that's running. Right, right. And so I don't know what the disconnect is there. But I thought, okay, well, there's, they seem sane. I don't know what happened here. But, right. I mean, they're, at least I felt like they were civilized and looked more like a normal convention speech. But some of the other ones, it was like, whoa, maybe it's, I should be scared. It's kind of like when you see a movie trailer and you're like, this movie looks amazing and then yeah. you go and you're like whoa that is not what I saw like that's they were the movie trailer his kids and yeah. he is the actual movie and he's scary he's really really scary so what do you expect to happen this week my gosh I hope like Kim said I hope that it's more positive and I don't I don't have a good feeling though to be honest especially after the WikiLeaks thing and and seeing a little bit more behind the curtain as we said before right. you know like it, it's disheartening but did, I didn't feel like it was lesser of two evils until a couple of days ago. Like I felt With like the oh, maybe people, oh. yeah, maybe people are right. It is the lesser of two evils. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have, and and again, I am a political moron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, we decided that's that I'm why smart. we bring smart people yeah. on like you, Susie. I'm smart about some things. I'm not as smart about other. Um, but I feel like you know, I don't feel the the visceral reaction towards Hillary that some people do yeah. and then I wonder what like am I missing something or is it just really truly a Republican versus Democrat like when people say I'm mm. a Republican it just comes with such Burr. well she's also mm. a woman and I think that um if if Hillary were a man and he said certain things that she says you mean like her they, husband <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that it wouldn't be taken the same way. You know, it's just like in the workplace. A, a man will do or say something and he's, you know, strong and he's a leader and a woman will do it and she's, you know, a witch. Well, right. people um, also see her as establishment, right? That she's like in cahoots. She's bought by the big businesses and right. Wall Street. People feel like at least Donald Trump isn't that. But to me, it's like this rich white man is exactly what the establishment looks like. But the way he talks about women and to women and, you know, just look at The Apprentice, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I get it. We'll go back to reality shows, right? Like a lot of that's produced. He's a great reality show yes. star. He is great. But like, what are you going to do? Go to the Middle East and talk to people and... <laughs> Like it's 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 embarrassing to have him as our spokesperson. Yeah, you know for how what how we think and what we believe in this country. Well, the, what what and I, this isn't meant to be a, a Trump bashing thing, but what I find so discouraging about him is the you know people think he's such a great leader, and I'm like you know he's all about himself. I mean, my personal feeling is a yes. strong leader is you're only as good as who you surround yourself with. Right. And so every time Trump opens his mouth, it's all about him, him, yep. him, him, him. Everything is like, I had the best ratings. This was the best RNC. It was the high, everything that comes out of his mouth is him, him, him. Yes. And so when they say he's just so in love with America, I'm like, I don't get that. Like, and at <laughs> unless least, his name is America, I don't but, agree. But, and I, and again, I, at least with Hillary, I hate her or love her. She very much, you, I get the feeling from her that she loves her country in a very authentic way. Mm. I, in my sense that she's not just about what works for her. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I feel like she could evoke more leadership and more stronger, a stronger team from a, from a, from a smarter place. Whereas he, I feel like would put together a team from a bullying 
now na- I, don't, I don't know if i'm making any well, sense there's yeah. just there's a, was, a dictator place yeah well somebody was talking about you know a lot of people said that about uh george w bush and even reagan that they they they're like the kind of guy you might want to have a beer with but they'll surround themselves with really smart people mm. i don't think that we can say the same for trump because he wants to be the smartest person in every room right and when you want to be the smartest person in every room you're going to have things happen like melania trump's plagiarism where the person doesn't say hey uh you can't put that in there right there's nobody checking you Mm -hmm. and that's an important component of leadership and that's scary you know how old is your son four four so you don't have these conversations at home yet right (laughs) (laughs) i know and what about your husband so so is he british so oh Oh, so he's like mortified by us (laughs) (laughs) come on honey let's move home yeah you know what brexit made it a little better because they kind of are in the same position right brexit but um yeah he's not as he listens to what i have to say he listens to me vent about politics but he's not invested really right he can't even vote because he's not a citizen right oh so he's going back over the wall (laughs) <laughs> he's out of here yeah he's out just like my people right yeah it's, it's crazy it's crazy he's but gonna the have thing a is, mark on his neck. you know and i know hillary's um ads have been you know you can go both ways on those uh they're against trump and they show some of the things that trump says and they show children's faces you know mm. reacting to mm. have you seen those yeah. at all no I yeah. so it's like any. children watching the tv and just hearing the things that trump says and like they're just, outraged. Yeah. And kids. It, well, and you they're just, they're sad. There's a sad. Sad. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so it's like, you're, you know, our kids are listening. That's the whole point. And, but, but it's true because, yeah. you know, my daughter's adopted from Taiwan mm. and she's like, do, do I have to go back? Like she <gasps> literally asked me if she had to go somewhere. Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> she's nine. Right. And she's a citizen. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but right. it's like, you know, th- there's a, a video game that they play and there's a song that's like, I will build a great wall. And it's like Donald Trump in auto tune. You know, right. I mean, it's it's in all of their conversations now, you know, yeah. and they're they're nine, ten and twelve, my kids. So yeah. it's just so fascinating how they know and they come home and they're like, Donald Trump said this and Donald Trump wants to do that. And it, it's really. Yes. I have it on in the house and I talk about it with my son though. So I feel like it's my responsibility to try to try to educate him on the why or the, the alternative to that because, you know, they always say that your kids usually, they always say usually, they always, <laughs> you know, that usually that your kids follow suit. Right. Mm. You know, but I don't want my son to make a decision based on what I believe. So I try to teach him, but he's not stupid. You know, right. you can hear, you can hear it and you can know when someone's being That's, authentic. And, yeah. yeah. And so, it's hard to actually do that with Donald Trump specifically. Yeah. Because I do the same thing with like these. Are, this is what the, they think and this is what they think about a, any given issue. Yeah. But I don't know what Donald Trump thinks about things Anything. other than we're going to deport people and build a wall. And, you know, like it's all this. None of it's actual real conversation. Yeah. Or so, possible. <laughs> Right, right. That's the other part that I feel like people. You can't really build a wall around yeah. us and block. You can't really mark all the Muslims and have them check in. Like you can't really right. do those things. You know, I um, think. Well, most people don't really know how government works, and so when he says, "I'm going to do this and that," they think, "Yeah, he's a tough talker." And all these other politicians, they're they're, um, you know, like wet noodles. They don't stand up for America. Yeah. They wishy-washy. don't understand that. That's not really how it works. You don't. It's not a dictatorship, and right. so if he has his way, it would be. Oh my god, that is so scary. I hope you're wrong about that. Okay, so I have a question because yeah. you're smart in politics. <laughs> so, no, this is a dream. I tried to we, look we, it up. We're on making Google. a list of questions for you, I Susie. I, I really did try to look this up on Google. Okay, so how is it possible that one party can blame? Uh, the one party being the Republican Party, blame Obama for all of the wrongs in our country when the Republican Party is the majority in the House. It's clever, and the isn't it? So how does that work? <laughs> I mean, I'm really, I'm really like, I, I'm confused by this. Like, so how does that happen? I mean, they do it because they can't. It, it's not accurate. Right. And they don't care if it's accurate. And the, they blocked everything along the way. doesn't right. matter. That's not the narrative that they're interested in telling. So they just don't. And that's part of why people are dis- disenchanted with politicians is because they lie constantly. Right. And even though we know Trump is lying constantly, we it sounds like he's telling the truth because mm. you think, who is who would talk like that unless it was the truth? Do you think that when they say, um, I'm a Christian man or I'm a Christian woman, that that automatically change, 
changes how someone would view someone that's talking. Like I, I find that to be frustrating. Um, you don't always hear people saying it's because I'm a Jew and that's why I'm lying. Like or why you should believe me. You, you don't, you don't really often hear Jewish people like always Absolutely talking not. about how Jewish they are. I wish but, they would though. Yeah, but I just mean I always feel like, well, I'm a Christian and this is what I believe. Absolutely. Like, and I feel like, well, what, to, what does that mean? Like, and yeah. I don't really know what to do with that. But look I at hear- the history of corruption and you know murder and every like there are plenty of Christians who oh, I, yeah. any religion. I'm just saying that it's amazing though that, that that's the blanket to protect you from any sort of wrong wrong but you don't hear jewish people saying i'm jewish and this is what i like you don't just hear in, that. Ho- they just know in hollywood better. yeah you, right they they, <laughs> it, they can't do that historically that that is the opposite of what a jewish person would want to do because right. they would be oppressed right but the, right. with christians with the privilege in this country know that that's something that's appealing and it gives them credibility and it mm. also gives them tons of voters the evangelical voter block is humongous and they're united and they've been mobilized by anti-gay legislation and uh, anti-abortion uh, movement and it works. And it doesn't matter if abortion, if Roe v. Wade is never overturned because they can mobilize people to vote by doing, by emphasizing that. Mm-hmm. And so I find it really insulting that Trump would even talk about how he's a Christian because Christians know that he's not like that. It's absurd. Yeah. And the fact that they think Hillary isn't and Barack Obama isn't, but they're going to be like, oh, yes, Trump. But even my mom's like, look, I'm not voting for a Sunday school teacher. I'm voting for a leader. So right. they're willing to screw family values. That right. doesn't matter anymore. All that right. stuff we talked about in the 80s mm-hmm. doesn't matter anymore. We want a leader. So it's kind of BS. You yeah. know, yeah. Like, that's just what it is. I well, would take say it I, from Antonio Sabata Jr., <laughs> you know, <laughs> God. who he was like, a Barack Obama is a Muslim. He's not a Christian. I know he's not a Christian. I'm like, oh, all right, Antonio, you got this, yeah. man. High five. I said, yeah, unless Antonio Sabata Jr. is going to speak out of his abs, no one has cared since 1995. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> stop, Antonio. Okay, just as a side note, I was watching Happy Days over the weekend with my son and Scott Bayo. It was when he like came onto the show. Chachi. And I'm like, Chachi. Oh, there's Chachi. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, you're an idiot. You turned out to be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and he's so, on Twitter, like, even if you don't include his handle, he searches his own name and blocks you if you say something bad about him. Oh, really? Like, what a narcissist. You actually search your own name. Oh, that's yeah. so funny. I have to see if I was blocked. Do it. Oh, my gosh. Because I, I tweeted. Oh, you did. I tweeted up a storm about him. He, he probably blocked- has a lot of things to block right now. Yeah. Because <laughs> did you see the interview job. that he had down with Tamron, somebody or other Hall, from the yeah. Tamron Hall? Um, and she she took him to task. Well, but because, she, yeah. And she had blocked him. And so he said something about Twitter. And she's like, well, I see that you blocked me from Twitter. And she showed the screenshot. Oh, my God. Um, but oh, yeah, she, she blocked her. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. He's, so, well, because yeah. He, he, that, he, he posted something that was extremely rude of course he did and by then, Hillary Clinton yeah. yeah and then he was like oh uh, you know it's just a picture that. it's just a picture uh-huh. you know like <laughs> yeah. give me a break it's just like uh, Donald Trump showing that picture of the uh, Ted, Ted Cruz's wife oh my god and then her ugly yeah. face that she was making he's like then, what it was a retweet yeah yeah I didn't oh, really mean okay. anything just because yeah. I was negative and harassing yeah I will say officially that um Scott Baio has not uh, you're still in lady wait does that There's mean still time. does that mean I'm not big enough yeah Probably. Maybe people. Let's no, just... I think I think you just need to be mit- more vitriolic. You know, right? You need to be more. Severe. Well, it's like you know that you've made it on Twitter when Scott Bayo blocks you and Tay Diggs follows you. <laughs> kidding? Yeah, he followed Tay everybody. Diggs doesn't follow you. Wait, he doesn't follow me. <gasps> oh, kid. are you I had kidding me? <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Who fo- need to sort that out yeah we really Wait, do who followed me that i was so excited you had you had tay Diggs, and then i was like i had tay Diggs, and then i realized tay Diggs follows everybody i have um the, uh what's his face from culture club boy george boy george and oh really i was so excited when siri the voice of siri and then oh I yeah yeah the voice of siri follows everybody well, does boy george follow everyone are you special Wait, that's kind of cool boy george that's yeah. really cool boy george follows me and this oh my is gosh total... tay Diggs doesn't follow me anymore you guys sweet Wait, am I broadcast? Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm right now. I'm on his <sighs> broadcast. Hold on, maybe Scott Bayo has <laughs> so, blocked no, me. Hold on. So George, bo- boy George, scratch all that. Boy George, um, because some crazy person was attacking me online, and somehow Boy George got mentioned in this Twitter no, 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 conversation no. about Boy George's somebody in their family, his family died, and somehow the person was trying to tell me that Boy George's mother killed my brother. It was this weird string of tweets. What? Yeah, because all of a sudden I was like, why is Boy George following me? That was bizarre. <laughs> and then I looked and you can see the whole string of conversations. I'm like, oh, this is creepy, but hi. 
Hi, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what up, boy? <laughs> wow. Yeah, so yeah. so cool. just to be official, Scott Bayo does not block me, but Tay Diggs still follows me. Ooh, so it's what all a good. relief. <laughs> I know. I was almost like had to go question my yeah. whole Spider existence. Harrison follows me. <laughs> Sp- Wait, who is oh, that? from Sirius yeah, XM. No, you know, his whole thing is he followed me, I'll follow you back, and I tested yeah. it. Yeah. He's the worst. Is well, he, he like. He follows me. Yeah, but isn't he? He's like a DJ at. Right? I don't have any idea, but I, a, my son and I were practicing. He's a DJ on this. Sirius XM. Yeah. And yeah. his whole thing is follow me and I'll follow you back. And he actually does that. But his um, his jokes are terrible. I terrible. Don't listen. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> um, sort of like Played Girl. I don't read it for the. Right. Played or, Girl? Played Girl. <laughs> Played Girl. Yeah. You read We're going it, back you, to the 80s. You read it for the articles. Yeah. So, all right. So let's talk about brain candy. <laughs> okay. I, and I love that there's even like a little song. You guys have the cutest oh, yeah, little. Who did that? Did your husband do that song for you? No, he bought it off of something, but we love it. Yeah, it's it so cute. Yeah, dee, totally. Dee, 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 dee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when did you, so you you uh, host that with Sarah Rice from, yeah. also from MTV how did, how did and show Reality World. Well, she's on, she was originally on The Real World Brooklyn, and then we met on the last challenge I ever did called The Ruins, and um, that's also where I met my husband. So that a, was a great season. I met my best friend and my wow. husband, and we just decided we're hilarious, <laughs> and we wanted this show to sort of be uh, a sugar rush for your intellectual side. So it's fun and pop culture but mm-hmm. we try to talk about some substantive things and use our educations to make uh, <laughs> make some loot and it's real fun and we love it it's how long iTunes. have you been doing that uh we started about a year ago she and i together i did one by myself for a while and i was like why am i talking to myself mm, this is so boring i do that all the time <laughs> <laughs> you know? my podcast in my head is great <laughs> well we've had a couple of times where one of us couldn't be there and the other one sort of had to run the show it's and not the same. it's not it's mm-hmm. really really difficult chemistry Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kim yeah. had a guest on one time though, and I was listening to the show on my way home. I was uh, working on a project, and I wasn't able to make it, and so I was driving on the four hundred five in or so That's in so LA. Weird. So I use driving loosely because it's the four hundred five, and you, yeah. you're usually Sitting parked. parked. Uh-huh. Um, but I was listening to Kim and, and this woman, and I was like, "Wow, this is such a great show." Oh, oh, I totally love broadcast, but then I'm back on it. <laughs> See, so. it was meant to be. <laughs> no, but she, you just did such a great job. I but did. anyway, so um, you guys record it um, out of a studio in your house. Yeah, thank we God know what my that's husband, like. Yeah, he's the sound guy, and so he sets it all up, and we come and we just giggle and talk about stuff that's on our minds, like documentaries or books or whatever. And it's just a grand old time. And how do <laughs> people it. respond to you? How do they view you different than how they may have seen you on the, on the 1998? Did you say like, how, what's the yeah. departure for you? I just got a, an email on Facebook from someone who said, I thought you were a dim witted <laughs> TWAT. I don't know if I can say that. Oh, and oh. <laughs> old. Well, that's yeah. a throwback wow. word. Wow. wow. Uh-huh. Okay. And I was like, and she's like, but you're not. And I love your show. And I was like, thank you. Yeah. But I know that's probably how, because, you know, I was naive and young and, uh, you know, I'm just different now. It was 18 years ago that I was originally right. on. So I hope that I've evolved in some way. Right. And so, yeah, I think people think all reality stars are idiots and whatever. So, so nice. if you could create a reality show that you would cast yourself in, what would that look like? Ooh. Good one, Kim. Yeah. Uh, I got it. Uh-huh. Well, I'm always, I'm always trying to come up with show ideas that I can pitch that would use my education and my reality background. So a lot of times there, I love cults. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in one okay. or be on well, a show. Thank you for the clarification. But yeah. I'd love to talk to people that were in yeah. cults mm. and try to get them to leave maybe and things like that. That would be right up my alley. So That's yeah, interesting. Maybe someday. You two, oh. I could see you two hosting a show together. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> sabotage. Because, <laughs> you know, Kim's sabotage. had these shows, you know, for 20 years. That, But I, I wonder if you find this, that um, it, it, that's too smart. Like, yeah. It's it's too smart. Yeah. Yes. You know what? And, and, I, and I'm saying that like it stinks because our, our, we're not ready for smart programming like that. And, you know, I... That's I've because just, you've been told that. Let's be honest. No, but we... I have been, but I, I've pitched great shows. Yeah. I, we, la- we laugh about this, that like even to the Learning Channel, they should, told me my show is too smart. And I'm like, you're the learning they did channel. Not. But I, but I do, but That's you know, having hilarious. been around for a while, and I'm sure you see that, that you understand the business side of it and yeah. that that's a great idea, but you'd have to 
excuse my French, sex it up a little bit. You'd have to have the mm-hmm. confrontation. You'd have to, and is that frustrating for you knowing yeah. that like something is really smart, but it wouldn't sell? Yeah. And that if it did sell, that they would change it to be something that I didn't mean for it to be. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot where I'll Absolutely. pitch an idea and then it'll come back to me as, but what if they were naked or whatever? <laughs> right. And it's just like, mm, no. You so. pitched afraid and now it's naked and afraid. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. It was right. just afraid before. Yeah, I just wanted them to be scared. <laughs> yeah, so that is frustrating. But I don't know. I feel like it goes in cycles and that I do think things are coming a little bit more back to the documentary style and a little less of the sort of produced stuff. Anyway, I don't know if that's true. It's just my sense. Well, I'm hoping that reality, yeah, there will always be, I think now, this reality programming that's kind of an escape and it's just yeah, fun okay. and it's like, and that's okay. Like the Real Housewives, I don't, Love I don't it. get it, yeah. you know, I but, don't watch it, but, but okay, yeah. you know, uh, but I think that people want more substance. Don't you think people I feel can sniff like, out the produced stuff now too? Absolutely. Viewers are very savvy and they're like, that doesn't look like as it really happened. That's what I think. Right. And when that happens, when people are like, that's not real, then maybe they'll get back to it. But there's not a ton of alternative, though. Like, and I think that's why, I mean, I flip through the, I have, you know, direct TV and there's like a million stations on there. And I'm like, oh, it's all reality. It's House Hunter, House Flipper. And and those things are fun, Mm. but like, it's all reality. Like, it's really hard for me to find something that, like, I I haven't watched it yet, but it was the Stanford Prison Experiment. Um, Yeah. And I have it recorded. um, But like, I want to watch things that make me feel. Like I'm learning that I'm I'm intrigued by something and have it be legit. Not that I feel like I mean House Hunters is fun, but like, don't you think though? There's that's fifty why... of those. I just snorted. Jackie hates that. Um, <laughs> do you have pet peeves like that? Sure. When you when you do your <laughs> yes. show and one of you does something and you're like, oh, I might have to leave right now. Like she yes. just snorted. <laughs> yeah, my co-host doesn't finish sentences. It just goes into <gasps> one long sentence. That's me. It drives me crazy, Jackie. She does. Come oh on. my gosh! I, and I feel like I, I totally feel like her husband. I'm like, just finish. What? <laughs> Come on. What? She actually does say that to me. She's like, J- finish, finish your thought. That's what you say to me. Because <laughs> I pause, and Jackie's like, well, and then she gets insecure, and I'm like, I'm just waiting for you to finish. I can't answer her until I get more than the. Because the, 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 I the. assume that you know the rest of the sentence. I don't really need to finish. <laughs> Most of the time I do, but you are incredibly smart, and so I want to hear oh, how smart wow. you are all the See time. See that? Good. You're good. <laughs> How are you not married? That was totally a like, <laughs> but that was totally a wife thing right there. You pulled that out. So the best offer I got on Facebook yesterday was Jackie offering me a bed and wine um, because, <laughs> because I, she lives I so lived close to my the two fire. favorite things. Yes, <laughs> but it's been a really long time. And so the fact that my friend offered that, I was like, literally, that's the you best. Could do, you could do worse. I I'm just worse. saying. Yeah. And I believe I've seen you do worse. I believe I've seen that. <laughs> Time's over. Yeah. No, but she's really, I mean, not to d- go back to the fires here for a second, but, but you're really close to the fires. You're about two miles away. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just made me laugh that. Yeah. Like, I'm I like, have I have a bed and wine. Yeah, and not then even realized, an extra bed. It was just, I have a <laughs> bed. Yeah. After I was, <laughs> I was going to comment after that and say, it's not an offer. I'm just bragging. Right. <laughs> right. But then I thought it was maybe too, too, I soon. never turned down wine and bed. Never. <laughs> in that yeah. order. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yours and Sarah's relationship, like do you guys argue on the air? Are you guys always kind of in sync with each other? Like, no, we're very different. It's an odd couple situation, but we find the same things funny. So that's the overlap. Yeah. And it's a good balance because she's more of the creative free spirit. And I am not See, those things. Said, you guys like, remind I, <laughs> us a lot of us. I'm yeah. so glad. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was telling you before we went on air today that like I was listening. I'm thinking I feel connected to Susie, and I feel like Sarah is, rep- and it's very. <laughs> yeah, Jackie's I noticed that more- Sarah's not here, so I'm on my own today <laughs> with two Susies. <laughs> <laughs> Double whammy. <laughs> no, but Jackie's definitely the the creative one. Yeah, between the two of us, I I lack those. Me too. That's I don't think you lack it. I do. I, I have an opinion mm. after. I have an opinion after you're creative. Yes, hmm. I do. Yeah, she does. Where I'll be like, oh, I have this idea, and then I will spend forty hours <laughs> on this idea, and I'm like, okay, ta da! And she's like, mm. <laughs> and then I just go and drink wine in we- bed. And cry. <laughs> that was a big turning point in our relationship. <laughs> I'm like, I promise to be a better this. Aww. Yeah, it was, it's, pretty, it's, it's yeah. actually, has it been good for your friendship for you and Sarah? Or has it been, is it, yeah, is it no. tense at all? Well, the only time it's tense is when I feel like I, because I am organized, I have to do a lot of the back end stuff. It's boring and like, you know, keeping everything organized with sponsors and 
whatever. Mm -hmm. And she can just show up and be hilarious. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm, this isn't really fair. But then she's so dang charming. Right. Then I'm like, I forgive you. (laughs) Let's have fun. See, I'm sort of Susie too then. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because Kim is off saving the world at all times. (sighs) Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's running, she's an executive, is the executive director of the Youth Project, which making a huge impact in kids' lives all over this valley every (laughs) single day. Mm -hmm. And she's like hiding now. In addition to that, she's, yeah. you know, constantly commenting and, and doing stuff and, and victims advocate, you know, writing books and, and talking yeah. and being, I mean, she won't ever tell people, but like she's often a mentor to other people who are, you know, their, their family members are victims or they're victims yeah. and they, they don't know how to navigate the new media attention and this and yes. that. And she, for free, you know, has been known to do all that stuff. So yes, I do the back end, yeah. you know, and yeah, I'm funny job. and charming. No, I'm kidding. But, <laughs> but you know, she'll sometimes come in three minutes. If you go back a few episodes where she showed up three minutes They're before, never let that go. I know. And I cried because I thought she was kidnapped. Wait, but, did you cry on the air? She had I to pull cr- it. To, well, she had two oh, minutes to three I minutes to pull it. it together. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, because so it, was, it it had just happened, and yeah. I was just so worried about her. You know that like it was just a crazy week, and things were going on, and so yeah. I didn't hear from her, and that's not like her. But she was on. Wait, a we were call talking about and, praising me. Can you go back so, to the praising? Anyway, now yes, you're yes. like throw me under the bus again. But my yeah. point is, you know, this uh, as you know, a podcast is also a business. Yeah, you know, and a radio show, and and so I feel like I'm always doing. I'm running a business and I'm co-hosting a podcast yeah. and so I don't know what my point is because it's all because Kim is so amazingly wonderful how do you guys, how do you and I guys, have nothing but is it like a marriage <laughs> for the two of you yeah. like do you find that you guys are able to communicate and and do yeah. you fight that, do you fight a little on the air but it's I think it's more the dynamic of the show where we'll say things we wouldn't say off the air because you're trying to mm. just keep it going and the energy going. That's funny that you say that. You'll yeah. say things on the air yeah. that you wouldn't say off the air. Because we know there's an air. audience. So it's, we're, because we come like from a what? TV background. Like call well, each other names? <laughs> no, it's never mean-spirited, <laughs> but it'll be like, you know, how a sibling kind mm. of thing where you would tease each other or point out each other's um, flaws in a yeah. playful way. We do that. You know, what I find, and I don't know if this happened to you and Sarah, like Jackie and I, um, um, had started our show over a glass of wine in your, in your kitchen, just mm-hmm. like always finding that we had these great conversations. Yeah. Like we should probably record right. this. But now I find that we, we've talked about this a lot that we don't talk that much <laughs> off the air anymore. Yeah. And I, and I, that's hard for me. Like, like can we just have Aww. like a moment where we're just friends. Like we're not, and we find that we reserve a lot of our conversation for yeah. the, the show, yeah. which I love, but then I also, because you don't want to kill the energy, yeah. you know, of, yeah. of a topic. You're like, Oh, let's not talk about this. Yeah. You like, know? hold your, hold your thought. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't tell me what you really think about that. And, I'm like, <laughs> and then, you know, and I find that to be, that's been, that's been an interesting process for us. And I feel like, and now I'm just gonna have it in a moment, but like, and I don't only because we're so, we spend a right. lot of time. Do you yeah, hold but, that? Do you, do you do that? Do you hold like, conversations we have to be really um intentional about scheduling time outside of the show because Mm. you know everybody's busy and whatever um because otherwise it's like that it's you just go on the mic and then that's your whole relationship is on the air right but i do think there's a little bit of an element because of our reality background where that feels very comfortable to us Ah. and that's where we met and we've spent a lot of time on the air together (laughs) and being filmed so do you miss that um Sometimes, because you know, I like attention. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and you're so pretty, <laughs> you guys. <Popular. laughs> I, I do. Oh my god, but that's the like the worst side of me that I try to. Does your son know that you had a life on TV for a while? Mm, he knows that it, we film stuff now, mm. but I don't think. He... Would you do a show with him, with your family? Mm, no, I don't think so. Will no. you let him see the stuff that you did? Yeah, because yeah. I was a good girl, right? Yeah, oh, right. I have nothing yeah. to hide. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, you did steal and say the F word. I know, right? <laughs> Just believe that part out. I would be mm-hmm. so excited if my 18-year-old, that's the worst thing that he ever, like if, if when my son's 18, if that's the worst thing he ever did was yeah. say the F word once and steal a pair of yeah. bowling shoes. Yeah. I still have them and they're great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Then yeah. it, was, it was a meaningful, it was a meaningful theft. <laughs> I can't believe we've got a minute left. This is oh. so 
ridiculously crazy. Yeah, Thank you, you so are much. amazing. Yeah. So tell us. So so SusieMeister.com is your hub for yeah. all things Susie. Check it out. Um, and then you have the Brain Candy. Is it Brain Candy? Brain Candy Podcast. Podcast. It's on iTunes. And we also have a website, TheBrainCandyPodcast.com. We have a book club we just started so people can join and read books with us and be nerdy. That's awesome. What kind yeah. of books do you do? We just started. So the first one is Moonwalking with Einstein, which is about like how to make your memory work wonders oh Ooh. you know what kim i'm gonna <laughs> sign you up right now for the book club <laughs> <laughs> right? if you remember <laughs> yeah. i'll remember yeah um but we are just so grateful that you're in the studio and you came and hung out with us today Thank and you. we'll have to have you back yeah man you know you're and we'll stuck ha- with me <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's it that's all we have oh, any any fast. parting words okay. kim we've got 10 seconds bye <laughs> 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 well we will see you next week hit us up on uh twitter broadcast show and facebook everywhere at broadcast and um we will talk to you on friday happy dnc (laughs) you're listening to broadcast with kim goldman and jackie mcdougall they're huge in anywhere other than somewhere that you've been before